Let's get stuck into the day's big stories with Sky News contributor Gary Hardgrave. Now, this weekend marks one year since Anthony Albanese and Labor won the federal election and a new poll by the nine newspapers shows Australians have given federal Labor a powerful vote of confidence, with 63% of voters saying the government has done a good job and only 29% rating it poorly. That's quite a long honeymoon there, Gary. Well, Rita, it's great to be with you. You know, this is the team that came second, but they won first prize. Remember, they got a lower primary vote than the Liberal Party. But look, uh, yes, good luck to them. Uh, every Australian wishes all new governments well. They want governments to govern properly. And I guess expectations were low, so he's better than people thought he was going to be, but not as good as Australia <laughs> needs him to be, because he's got to stare down. He's got to stare down this Chris Bowen bloke, because on a daily, hourly, minute-by-minute minute basis, this bloke is beggaring up our economy. <laughs> the cost of electricity is going up, 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 uh, because he's got this hatred of coal. He has this hatred of nuclear, the things that can create electricity in the big amounts that Australia needs. Albo says he's going to create Australian industries, but nobody will invest because there's... No certainty. And, 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 you know, all this stuff about uh, negative gearing and stuff, I mean, Rita, what is a family home? They're saying there'll be no negative gearing on the family home. Is a family home three bedrooms, one bathroom? What about an eight bedrooms, four bathroom? Is that a family home? This is a government that is now wrenched by all these left-wing ideologies, this Marxist march through public policy in this country. And I don't know whether Albanese realises this or not, but he's just in the way of what they want to do and he's disposable. But, look, anyway, at the moment, people like him and I guess they fear what the alternative is. But Peter Dutton is really now starting to nail an agenda that says, I have uh, values, I care about everyday Australians, I want government out of our lives, we want a handout mentality, handout of our pocket... He wants to drag the Liberal Party back to the centre because it's been too far on the left. I mean, Dutton is now starting to really hit his strides and I think over the next 12 months, as it becomes evident, Albo really doesn't know what he's doing and that's why they send him overseas so often, uh, then the honeymoon will end. But uh, hopefully <laughs> well, not too much damage done in the, in the meantime. <laughs> Well, I think uh, Peter Dutton gave him a big head start because for a long time there were watching on, wondering yeah. precisely what was happening amongst the Liberal leadership. I mean, look at The Voice. It took them 10 months to come yep. out against it when it should have been yeah. self-evident from the start that on principle they should have opposed it. So they have given them a big head start. We'll see how things uh, develop in the coming months and years. But... Uh, we're getting more information regarding these um, Indigenous treaty deals. The Queensland uh, government is considering frightening. these deals, including that Indigenous corporations will push for the power to veto mines in what they consider to be environmentally yeah. or culturally sensitive areas. What sort of an impact is that going to have on the mining sector? Well, it's happened in the United States, it's happened in Canada, it's happened in countries just like ours where there's this international Marxist kind of approach that says First Nations are more important, that their stories are more important. Uh, and maybe they are, maybe they aren't. But uh, this whole question of truth-telling, it's because Uncle Bob or Auntie Betty told me something that must be right. And how dare you question it because you must be a racist if you doubt what our spoken history is. Look, Rita, you know, I think that the reconciliation of the past is important. There's no doubt that some things were done badly to some people in the course of the history since 1788. But, you know, Rita, the average age or the mortality rate for Aboriginal Australians has advanced doubled in, in the time since the European settlement's been here. So there's some, some upsides. But, look, when it comes to mining... No doubt about it, money will solve the problem. The federal government wants to give them control of water. Maybe they'll build dams. God knows we need to build some, otherwise we won't be able to grow anything in some parts of Australia into the future as the uh, El Nino effect kicks in again. So, so look, Rita, this is just simply about the rent dams? Class That's in Sydney wishful. and Melbourne. Well, it's a wish. That's it's wishful a wish thinking, that we thinking we're going to build dams. It's... 
Well, absolutely. We, we live in a, uh, on a Rita. continent it's where there's building. droughts. I know. We have increased the population significantly, but we haven't built too many new dams. Yeah. And then we wonder why we run out of water every few years. So it's exactly. an ongoing issue. Exactly. But further on the mining yep. sector, Australia's most uh, successful businesswoman, uh, business person, you would say, mining magnate Gina Reinhardt, yep. she's warned that Australia's reputation as a stable energy supplier is at at risk. Speaking at a Queensland Resources Council function in Brisbane today, Mrs Reinhardt said, we cannot forget the important role Australia's exports play in regional security and stability. If Australia does not step up our investment and exports, if we allow Russia to become the preferred supplier of energy and met coal to Asia, that will have consequences for the security of Western countries. Very well said indeed. Gary, Gina Reinhardt also warns that the giant Roy Hill mine, which has paid billions, billions with a B, in royalties yep. and taxes, is at risk of closing in just 10 years if there is no change in government policy towards the uh, resources sector. Look, Gina Reinhardt, Mrs Reinhardt is a great Australian, probably the greatest living Australian. She does not say anything by guesswork. It is very deliberate in her observation. And to be honest, yes, she's very wealthy and all those things, but she is thinking about the future in a way I wished a few people in politics would. I mean, all these people... Who, who these days are in our parliaments who are just so welded on to worrying about the past. And, and frankly, the old saying goes, if you live in the past, you die in the present. We need more people to start thinking about the future. And all that Mrs Reinhardt is saying very plainly here is that we are currently on a collision course with calamity if we don't actually get our act together and realise that Australia has a role to play, not only in the mining sector, but I submit to you again, Rita, in the agricultural sector. We feed 150 million people a year out of Australia. With more water, we could feed three quarters of a billion. And I think that that's the sort of stuff Australia needs to be talking about. We're going for a big Australian population, but right now the current government wants a barista-led recovery rather than real productive uh, elements being built back into the regions of Australia. Gina Reinhardt at least is talking the truth as usual. Now, quickly, I want to get your response to this massive story from the US. Uh, the Durham report released yeah. oh. over the FBI's investigation of supposed connections between Donald Trump's campaign and Russia during the 2016 election. Special counsel John Durham says the FBI should never have launched its investigation. He said the FBI had no evidence before it launched its probe and used a very different standard indeed when weighing concerns about alleged election interference from Hillary Clinton's campaign. Gary, this is a bombshell story. I'm going to be covering it fully tomorrow night. But what occurred here undermined democracy. Yeah, and there's no doubt that the Trump derangement syndrome, which just beset the, uh, the lack of agenda Biden administration... Uh, has really coloured, I think, a very, very poor chapter in American democracy. It's a wonder they don't go back and blame Donald Trump or one of his uh, forebears for giving brummy advice to Davy Crockett and causing the Alamo disaster. I, I mean, he is responsible, apparently, for everything. And, look, they can't get him on policy. They're trying to get him on personality and personal life. Uh, and I think a lot of Americans are sick to death of it. And they just simply want there to be a play... Uh, the, the, the ball, not the man kind of approach to their, their democracy. And, and heaven knows where this is going to go, what this does to the 24 election. But the Donald doesn't seem to be much for turning, Rita. So time shall tell.